Welcome to Bible Answers. I'm Walter Feit. We have a question here with regard to the last Pope and Satan's impersonation of Christ predicted. And the question deals with the papacy and the predictions of Malachi that this present Pope should be the last Pope, whether that is so or whether that is not so. And then, of course, there are the issues of Revelation chapter 7, five have fallen, one is, the other has not yet come. Does this refer to a literal sequence of Popes since uh, the reinstatement of the Vatican State? And According to this theology, the present Pope would also be the last Pope. So let me start with Revelation chapter 17, or with Revelation in general. When you study the books, the chapters of Revelation, you will see that there is a historic, continuous process of prophetic unfolding. And this is a theme that we find throughout the Bible. Uh, if we take Daniel's prophecies in Daniel chapter 8 and chapter 9, there is also an unfolding of the prophecies in a historic, continuous manner. There's a tendency today to take part of those prophecies out of their historic continuous context and then to hurl them into the future and give them a literal interpretation at the time of the end in an eschatological sense. Now there's a problem with that because you are breaking the method which is consistently used throughout the Bible and for no apparent reason you take a portion of a prophecy and you hurl it into another time frame. Now if that applies to Daniel chapter 8 and 9 then it must apply to Revelation chapter 17 as well. So when the Bible talks about these kingdoms that follow one upon the other and then suddenly we want to take a portion of the prophecy and make it literal and apply it only to the end times and make it literal popes, then we're actually also breaking that rule and bringing in an element of futurism. So how do we solve this impasse? If we stick with the historic continuous, then you have successive kingdoms coming one after the other. And in the end, you have a kingdom which receives a wound, disappears, has a is stage, a is not stage, rises again. And uh, in fact, there are a number of DVDs that you could watch. One of my own ones on this issue is A Woman Rides the Beast. And that deals with these issues. Now, is this one the last pope? If I had to say yes, categorically yes, then I would also be dabbling in this futuristic interpretation where I've taken a portion of a prophecy and made it literal. Don't get me wrong, I would love it if this were the last pope, and I certainly hope that those who have this interpretation are absolutely right. But what if it fails? If I am rooted in historic continuous interpretation, it wouldn't shatter my hopes, it wouldn't shatter my theological picture, and I'd be no worse off than I was before. If I ever make them literal, and things don't turn out as I would hope that they should turn out, then my faith could be in trouble. So I suggest we stick to the, to the historic continuous interpretation and we see how it pans out. 
if God in his mercy allows history to continue and there are more popes to come, then it wouldn't change the picture because we're not bound by people or particular popes at the particular time. What we are bound by then is a prophetic scenario, an event orientation. What must take place, according to the Bible, before the end will come? Obviously, there must be an implementation of the mark of the beast. That is a clear signal in the Bible. The beast and his mark. The beast out of the sea, the beast out of the earth, the beast out of the earth will introduce the legislation which will honor the first beast. So the Protestant world will enact and enforce together with the old world legislation to bring about a decided decision. Are we standing with the commandments of God or are we standing with the commandments of men? Are we going to acknowledge God as our creator and our redeemer by keeping the Sabbath? Or are we going to acknowledge the authority of the Roman Catholic Church by keeping Sunday? Those are the issues that face us and not whether this pope or that pope is reigning at a particular time. I hope that puts it in perspective. But as I said in the beginning, should they be right, I would be the first one to be overjoyed.